Well, good morning. It is Sunday, January the 14th, and the sun is trying to come out. We're going to go straight into the King James Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 14. And if you remember, Lot and Abraham parted ways because they had too much cattle in one concentrated place, and they needed to divide the cattle so they could divide the resources and nobody fight over which ground they should be using. Lot took to the east and uh, ended up in the area of Sodom and Gomorrah in the Jordan Valley. And Abraham went the other way in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron. So here we are, chapter 14. And it came to pass in the days of Amphrael, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of El Lazar, Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemember, king of Zebulaim, and the king of Bela, which is Zor. And these were joined together in the Vale of Siddim, which is in the Salt Sea, which is the Dead Sea. Twelve years they served to Dolorimer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year came to Dolorimer and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephaims in Ashtroth, Carnaim, and the Zuzims in Ham, and the Emims in Shavath Kirathaim, and the Horites in their Mount Seir, unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to Eshmethpat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites that dwelt in Hazan Tamar. And there went out of the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zebloim, and the king of Bela, the same as Zor. And they joined battle with them in the Vale of Siddim. Then Chedorlaomer, the king of Elam, and the tidal king of nations, and Amphrael, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elassar, four kings with five. And the Vale of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their victuals, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped, and told Abram the Hebrew. For he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, the brother of Anor, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer, and the kings that were with him at the valley of Shavah, which is the king's dale, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, and said, Blessed be Abram, of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet. 
and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of their men which went with me, Aner, Eshcol, and Mamre. Let them take their portion. I rode alongside of that, God is our reward. <clears throat> but really, that kind of pertains to, pertains to the beginning of chapter 15. But uh, you can see that Abraham was well satisfied. He didn't want any reward. But here we see the introduction of Melchizedek. And notice he's king of Salem brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Not only was he a king, he was the high priest to the order of Melchizedek, a king and a priest. We've heard about that, haven't we, in the New Testament. So here he is, king of Salem. So that's an interesting introduction, isn't it? We go back here and we find about the kings and everything else that's going on. It seems to be that there's always going to be strife and, and war and dispute over lands. I mean, we don't really know what the reason for this war was. It's just that they came against them. And uh, just as we saw with Lot and Abraham, it was probably over resources because resources can be few and far between. And of course, once you've exhausted yours, you've got to go get more from somewhere else. Um, so that's that's a likelihood. We also note in verse 13 that Abram's referred to as the Hebrew. Which is kind of interesting because he came from Ur, which was a pagan land, and now he's referred to as Abram the Hebrew. And he's in the plain of Mamre. So, Abram got word that Lot had been taken and his family, and of course he's kin, he's family. And so he went, he gathered up together his 300 servants who were good and well-trained men, and they went after them, and they got them. They took them by night, and they brought them back. And of course the kings were pleased. Now the only king that he would take anything from was Melchizedek because he blessed him. And he said, blessed be Abraham, the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thine enemies into the hand. And he gave him tithes of all. You see, when you're dealing with God, when you're dealing with godly people, and for us, that would mean fellow Christians. There is a respect amongst us. There was a respect amongst them. And he was saying, blessed be. Now, Abraham now knows that Mechuseldek is a man after his own heart because he was a priest of the Most High God. This is the God that Abraham has been hearing and talking to. So he now has a friend, a connection. So you can see how God works. Even though Sodom and Gomorrah kings were pleased and wanted to offer him, while well, the king of Sodom did, wanted to offer him reward, he, he didn't uh, kind of agree with the way they were living. And so he said, no, you know, I, I'm not going to take from you because I don't want you to turn around and say, I've made you rich and you're beholding to me because these people did not walk with God. And this is another message for us is that in everything we do, we should seek out our own kind and walk with them. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't go out and practice discipleship to non-believers. Of course we should, but we keep company with our own because in amongst our own, we seek strength. And I have to say, I've got some good Christian co-workers I've got good Christian neighbors. I have a good Christian church and family. I call them my family because they are my church family. And I love them all dearly. And we are very tight together. We look after each other. And that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, even including my boss at work, you know, 
I was talking to him about uh, the fact that tonight I'm going to be preaching. And he said, you know, are you ready for it? And I said, well, you know, I have a plan. He says, you're just going to let the Spirit guide you. You could have knocked me over with a feather when he said that. I said, yes, I'm going to let the Spirit guide me. It is so good to know that you're working with fellow Christians. It lightens my heart. It gladdens my heart. And we look after each other. Now, we don't grant each other favor over other people, but we look out for each other. And that's a good thing. And we care and we pray for each other, which is even more important. So, tonight I am preaching at um, Ayler Valley Chapel, 7 o'clock. Um, Andy did call me and left a message and said that the road from Emmitsburg to Ayler Valley, that Ayler Valley Road from Emmitsburg itself, uh, there's some flooding along the way. So if anybody's going, uh, find an alternative way. The back way uh, from Route 16 and around the back of the mountain and up to Ehlers Valley, apparently that's still good. And that apparently is the shortest route from my house, 35 minutes. But you can also take 15 and get off at St. Mary's Mount. And Ehlers Valley Chapel is a couple of windy roads, but Ehlers Valley Chapel's up there behind it. Um, I'm really looking forward to preaching tonight. This is something that Andy asked me to do last year. And he said, I want you to pray on it. And I said, I am going to pray on it. And uh, I'm, there's a little bit of testimony going to come out here. Is that I prayed. And I heard nothing. I heard nothing for days. And I thought, oh, Andy wanted to make this schedule up. He's going to go ahead without me because, and I wouldn't blame him. You know, he needed to know he was making up the schedule for the next couple of months into the new year. And nothing, 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 nothing. I kept praying, nothing. I went to church Sunday morning and Pastor Ron gave testimony about how he got into becoming a pastor. And during the course of his testimony, I could hear God speaking to me and telling me that, yes, this is what he wanted me to do. As I came out of church, I told Pastor Ron, and he was so pleased to hear that, and he agreed with it, and he was so happy, and that was great. Now, Trish was talking to someone else, so she didn't hear what I had told Pastor Ron. But when we got out, I said to her, I think I got my message, and she interrupted, and she said, I was thinking the same thing. She said, God has given you an answer to your prayers, hasn't he? I thought, okay, so that's one, two. We got home and uh, I did give Andy the answer and I told him this. But then the following day, one of the pastors that I follow, I can't remember if it was David Jeremiah or Charles Stanley, but they posted a message about pursuing God and doing God's work. And I thought that was just the icing on the top. It convinced me that my prayer had been answered from God because these were all godly people. And so the thing is, I could now say, yes, I'm going to do this. And yes, God is going to be with me because it is according to his will. I was not going to say yes until I had got an affirmation from God. And he's given it. And so hopefully tonight is going to go off really well. I know that the Holy Spirit is going to be present. The Holy Spirit is present inside of all of us. Once we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that means we also have Jesus inside of us and we also have God inside of us. This is why Jesus said our bodies are a temple. Don't forget the Holy Trinity is one. But we accept the power and the conviction of the Holy Spirit inside of us. It's whether or not you're going to listen that makes the difference. This is highly important to remember because what goes on in your heart, God sees. What you do is something else, but what goes on in your heart? And I wanted to make this clarification here that although we have already seen that people have been punished by God, 
who did something wrong. And other people who did something wrong are not punished by God. They're still, their promises are valid. You know, I'm talking about Abraham and Cain, Abram and Cain. And quickly we can sort of come to a conclusion. Well, you know, there's a confliction here. You know, one person does something wrong and he gets punished severely. Another person does something wrong. I mean, look, even with Adam and Eve, you know, they were punished. They were evicted from the Garden of Eden. But the thing is, God still remained with them. And the difference is, he can see into your heart. When he looked into Cain's heart, he could only see evil. And Cain was banished because of that. And he paid the price because of that. And his children paid the price because of that. He looked into the heart of Adam and Eve and he could see that they were of a good heart. He looked into the heart of Abram and he could see that he had a good heart. And so he stays with us. When you give over to a perverse mind and a heart, God is no longer with you. You can't do that with the power of the Holy Spirit in you, which we have now. Don't forget, the power of the Holy Spirit doesn't come until after Pentecost. Okay? And he stays with you. The Holy Spirit would leave people in the Old Testament. Okay? We have to, we'll learn about that later on. But the Holy Spirit would come upon them and he would leave them. And they would be without. Saul would be a good example. King Saul. So here we find that God can see into your heart. And this is kind of an overall lesson of bringing us up to speed about what we've come to. And we can see that God blessed Abraham. You know, he blessed him with the ability to go get Lot and bring him out. You know, he's with him all the way. And he will be successful in his life because God knows that in his heart, Abraham is a good man. We introduced Melchizedek. Melchizedek and Abraham recognized each other as having good hearts because the power of God is within them. And this makes all the difference in the world. Okay, But you've got to listen. You've got to acknowledge that power that's within you. Okay, You've got to listen. This is why Jesus kept saying, those of ears to ear and eyes to see, listen, hear, feel the power, the conviction of the Holy Spirit within you. Let him take over. Don't keep, you know, blaspheming the Holy Spirit by not listening to him. Okay? Don't do that. Listen to him. Seek his help. Seek his guidance seek his love because God truly does love you and I love you too. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and uh, for some of you maybe I'll see you tonight. I will certainly see everybody at church today. Love you all. Bye for now.